Hello there. It's Friday. And I'm doing another 4K HDR upload. Uh, I made sure to dial in the mic settings this time, so we shouldn't have an incident like we did last week with the Devil May Cry 5 demo. And I'm going to have to do that every time from now on with each new game. It's a chore, but I have to do it because last week's video was terrible. And good thing is a demo, and I'll just wait until the actual game comes out, which I will be getting, despite my concerns about it in any case. But this week, I'm doing Snake Pass. Now, this is a game I actually streamed uh, the entirety of my playthrough last year, before I was talking these videos, and before I even had decent enough internet. So as a result, the video was all kinds of crappy. But, hopefully it at least gave an idea of what the game was like. This is an awesome game. This came out at the same time as uh, another game called Youth Lately, which I also streamed last year. And um, this game did not get as much press, I think, as it deserved as a result. People were more interested in Youth Lately. I think this game is better. It's more interesting, it's more unique, and I think it looks better, too. Surprisingly, it's built on Unreal Engine 4 which is surprising considering what the game looks like. So I'm going to hit start, or A, I guess. I am recording this in 4K and HDR. I do have a save select available that's 86% um, done. I'm going, to sh I'm going to show the beginning parts of this game, and maybe later I'll, I'll pick the, um, the more completed save file and show you some later levels. But I'm going to start here. have the resolution set to 4K. And this is what the controls are like. We got... I'm going to set this to the default thing because I think that's actually easier. We've got grip on the left, trigger, move forward on the right. Center camera, center camera, tail grab, dive down, lift, head up, and swim. B does nothing. Move your head around with the left analog stick and move the camera around with the right. And you can change expressions with the D-pad. Notice there's no jump button. This is a 3D platforming game in which you can't jump. I like setting the camera on inverted, so let's start a new game. This is just a gorgeous looking game. It has a very simplistic art style, but because it's very colorful and very bright, and a bit rather cartoony, I like it. You don't get enough games like that nowadays. And now we're controlling the character. Right trigger to move forward and the left analog stick to go to aim where I'm going. You can think of it as like a very weird car control. That right there is a checkpoint. Slither over it and you will save your progress and respawn there. These little blue things are one of the handful of collectible things you can get. Being a 3D platformer, it of sorts, it has it has some collectibles. Now you basically want to move like a snake in this game because you are a snake. 
So if you sliver back and forth, you will actually move faster because it has to do with being, having more surface area underneath you. I'm not sure. But it's a very satisfying, very tactile feel, the movement in this game that makes even the most basic elements of a platformer um, seem meaningful. Kind of stuff you just take for granted, like getting to a, another platform. And even though this has collectibles, it isn't really about them, even though the sole purpose of level, the sole method of level progression in this game is collecting specific items, specifically those things, those gems. Can we get the camera focused right? Those red, yellow, and green gems, which are the, key, the keystones. So the goal here is to find all the keystones and bring them back to this portal to proceed to the next level. And along the way you can find um, these blue uh, orbs and also occasionally there will be coins. I think each level has three coins. And these are much harder to get. Uh, to climb this thing, you basically need to grip it. You need to coil yourself around it like that and then use left trigger, which is the grip button. And alternate between that and slide forward to climb stuff like this. Doesn't seem like there's anything down there except the endless abyss. So let's uh, proceed forward. We got all the blue orbs. We got a gold coin. There might be others. There's typically three of them in the level. Now what we have to do is bring this last keystone to the gate. for a happy snake. This is Noodle, by the way, and the game specifically calls out the fact that he's a vegetarian, which is interesting. How's on? There are actually five coins per level. to the second level. As you can see, the levels are getting progressively more complex the further we go. Not that that's unexpected, but it is notable. Anyone who's watched my recent videos will know that I have definitely been struggling with the audio levels since I got this new mic. 
This is a Blue Yeti Pro Mic that I found on sale for less than $100, which is a pretty good price considering new this thing goes for over $200. And it's my mic as opposed to my friend's who just left his mic here because he, I guess he's no longer interested in doing uh, his uh, videos anymore, at least for the time being. In any case, I got my own mic now, and I've been using it, been fiddling around a bit, making some, let's say, less than great content using it, because I hadn't dialed it in yet, and it seems to have been odd, because in some videos, my voice will be too loud in comparison to the game audio. In other videos, it will be the opposite. You can't hear me hardly at all while the game is just too loud. In this game, I, I actually put the effort into dialing it in ahead of time, and I think the results are much improved. Call of Duty games, my um, results tend to... My results as of late have been better, but at first, I was too loud. And then the game is too loud. So I'll just have to do this on a game by game basis and if I can figure out the quirks of each game and each kind of game, whether it's a lot of music, little music, loud music, aggressively loud music, like Sonic, my Sonic Adventure video was pretty bad as well, because you could barely hear me at all. Like I said, the Devil May Cry 5 demo video was, well, it was bad because you could hear too much of me and not enough of the game. This one seems better though. In any case, we're just sort of slithering around rather aimlessly, looking for stuff. Look at this, a little area. All the keystones are gone. Now there's one. Yep, and there are water sections as well. Thankfully, you don't have to worry about breathing underwater because Nudo can breathe underwater. So you don't have to worry about drowning or anything like that. This is not that kind of game. See how much faster you go when you sliver like this? Not to say there aren't obstacles in this game that can kill you and have you respawning at your last checkpoint, because there are. You got cliffs, and later you'll also see levels of spikes and lava pits. All that in, in mind. Yeah, you wrap around these things and climb. I really like this game because even though not being able to jump makes this kind of a not a platformer. It's actually one of the more pure platformers I've played in recent years because the purpose is platforming. Getting from one platform to another. And it takes that concept, which we've taken for granted ever since I guess the NES days, and makes it meaningful again. It makes it worthwhile. It makes it a challenge. How's that sound? I'm not exactly great at this game, I know I'm not, but I enjoy it nonetheless. Okay. Use our left trigger thing to grip ourselves around here. I'm sort of tapping the left trigger here. 
second keystone. Look, there's one of those gold coins. Now this level, it's not uh, apparent how important that gripping thing is because I'm not really using it all that much. I got up that with no trouble at all. But later levels, these um, platforming sequences become a lot more complicated. get better ideas as to how big the game world is. Ah. Snake our way around here. Get that thing. Just like that. Now this is going to be bit more complicated because you have to go a lot higher. You can't just lazily get your way up here. You have to really use the grip mechanic as well as the wrapping yourself around this pole mechanic. You have to really engage the gameplay mechanics of this in order to get up here. Look at that. All the keystones. Few more of these collectibles, and we'll head over to the next, to the gate, to the next level. Oh. It's just a nice, relaxing, laid-back game. Certainly at the beginning. are, so let's go to the next level. Gatekeeper Gardens. Something or someone keeps removing the keystones of these gates. And we have to find them. Alright. Now this bird is more than just a, a tutorial device for this game. He's also uh, someone who can help you out of binds a bit by lifting up your tail. You engage that by pushing Y. If you need a little extra lift to get across a certain gap, 
or up a certain uh, over a certain obstacle or up a certain set of pipes, you can use that. It's not a get out of jail free card. He's not gonna rescue you if you've already fallen off a cliff, but it's an extra little boost. Yep, I'm not doing this correctly. There we go. There we go. Gold coin as well. Let's see if we can get that thing. Not that one, but the one to the left. Actually, let's get this gold coin first. There seems to be a lot of stuff here getting me a little distracted like a kid in a candy store. There we go. Whoa. Down here, we got another boom. Seems to be 20 of these on each level. There are no lives to have to worry about in this game, so you're not collecting these to increase that. It's just collectibles. Things to find. Entirely optional. The only things you actually need to find in order to progress are the, the keystones. And there's one right there. Look at that. A keystone and a checkpoint. Life is good. If you do die after collecting a keystone before you reach a checkpoint, then you have to get that keystone again. So it's important to get those checkpoints after you get a keystone. And there's the third one down there. This is a neat little thing in this game. It's a little tube. It will slither down. As I go while holding down the, the, the right trigger to go forward. It's very easy to go the wrong way around and thus unwrapping yourself around the very pole that you're trying to wrap yourself around. So, ah! And I lost grip there. Wasn't anything up there anyway, but still. more of those to get. This is a bit easier. This going up this way. get that coin right there. Like that. And there we go. Now there's the last keystone. That looks fairly easy to get. But if you look up there, you see not only a blue orb, but a, a gold coin. Yeah, 
here's where it gets a little dangerous because we're getting awfully close to a bottomless pit. Oops. Even though A is not jump, it does perform a similar function because it lifts your head up. Alright, this can be a little tricky. We have to wrap our way around this hole without falling like we just did. Because we did save. Game is make no mistake this game is trickier than it looks especially when you're playing sloppy like I am at the moment all right we're back up here let's try this again There we go. Now you just sort of glide down right on to the checkpoint. I say we grab this last keystone and go to the next level. How's that sound? And there's another blue orb right next to where the keystones are put to the portal. Now you don't have to wait until you get all three of these keystones to return them to, uh, into the portal. It might actually be safer to return them one at a time when you, as soon as you find them. It's just happened to work out that that's the way I've um, done it this time. And you can also retry these levels if you want to get more of the collectibles or just go back and play them later. And the game does have a few different level designs. It's not just all this um, sort of greenish type level. And when I, what I'll do is maybe after this level I'll go to my other save and I'll show you what some of the other later levels look like. at this point you're no longer really getting that intro with the bird exclaiming that the keystones have been stolen and you need to go find them at this point you know the, you know the tale you know the story now this might actually be the first real dangerous obstac obstacle the first real dangerous platforming sequence where you could definitely fall trying to get this stuff Especially that gold coin. See how far out that is? And look, that is the endless abyss that will have you respawning at the next checkpoint. I'm not gonna do that, but I am gonna use a little bird to help me out there and get that blue water. In, the, in my main save, it took me quite a bit of tries to get that gold coin. Because getting it is just half the battle. You also have to get back to the platform, to the main, the island, whatever it is. Not only are you going out on the limb, you have to find, you have to crawl your way back as well. And that's just for a couple of optional things. There are going to be sequences in later levels where you have to progress to go through uh, platforming stuff like that in order to progress, in order to get a keystone, in order to get to the end of the level. And 
And as you'll see later in this video, you'll get an idea as to how messed up this game can get. point I can get real easy. They're not only in difficult places, sometimes they're just in places that are out of the way and if you're just going along mainlining it, you'll miss it because you just won't see them. So we're up here, with that thing. stone is up here, so I will wrap myself around each one of these poles to go upward. Uh -huh. Or wrap myself around something, anyway. I think like these poles positioned like this are just to remind you that you can go a lot faster if you slither back and forth. Alright, so this is kind of a tricky situation, not because you're over any um bottomless pit or thing anything that can harm you, but it's just more you really have to coil yourself around in order to get this key last keystone, which is at the top of this. I can't lazily get past this part. And this is also a good section for teaching you that you can't just hold down the right trigger and keep going. You have to be more deliberative, deliberate and more thoughtful about it. Calculate. If you aren't, stuff like that can happen. Ah. Oops, went the wrong way. I have to recoil myself back. Nope. Let's uh go back to the left. Let's go this way actually. Not least because there's another blue collectible orb thing here. We can get. Also because this area this way might be easier. snake is giving you audio and visual cues as to when it's losing grip. It's a little ah ah kind of thing. It's facial expressions. See? Alright, there we go. Took a few tries, but we got it. Look at the happy snake. And there is the portal. We'll grab that last, um, whoa, right over our pit. Probably shouldn't have done that, but whatever. Grab this last, uh, orb. Actually, let's take a look back here, see if there's anything. In fact, there is. A gold coin. Yeah, like I said, they're not all difficult to get. Sometimes they're just hidden. Out of view. Now, do we want to 
want to try to get that thing. That's... It's not. Let's go on to the next level. At the very least, let's exit this level. We got a little thing. Honestly, when I first played this game I and beat this level, I thought that was some sort of boss I had to fight. I was going, what? Okay, that's... And I realized, oh wait, it's someone who's thanking me. There is no combat in this game of any kind. And with that, I do believe we've actually unlocked the next world. So I'll show you that. And then I'll show you a little bit of the later worlds as well. This is uh, a different color palette, a different um, level type, and it's going to have different obstacles and different dangers. I do believe this level, this, these, uh, this world has more um, water in it than the first one. Take a look, right down here is a coin. Trying to There we go. That was a bit dicey, but we got it. Here's where the underwater sections are. Hit X to dive deep. And you hit A to swim up. Like I said, there's no need to worry about air or anything, because Noodle can breathe underwater. Alright. This is also the first level that introduces um, switches and things you have to interact with in order to progress, in order to make something happen. The way you use this is you coil it, coil yourself around it, and there are going to be switches that these switches only operate if you coil yourself the right way, either clockwise or counterclockwise. Like this one is working counterclockwise. As you can see that opened up a door, but in addition to that, it also provided me with a little platform to get that keystone. That may not have actually done that. I probably could have gotten that before it anyway, but you kind of couldn't see it from until that camera panned over the door anyway. Down here. Not really necessary that I do that, just playing that. More stressful underwater levels of games like Sonic make me want to seek air anyway. It's a psychological thing, I guess. I thought I saw an old blue orb down here somewhere. Ah, oh, there it is. You can sort of hear these things when they're near you. 
you hear it as sort of a twinkling sound or a glistening sound. Maybe that's the correct word. I'm not sure. This is where I was, just was. Okay. It's a little easy with the camera to get disoriented and find yourself going in circles when you're underwater like this. And yes, you still swim, go faster when you do the snake thing. Checkpoint. get our way up here. I'll do is I'll beat this level and then I'll go on and I'll show you the first level of the next world. And then I'll end it with um, a taste of the last world. Heck, I might even show you the last level to show you how really messed up this game can get. Here's a little thing to interact with. It's a ball. You want to push this into that hole at the bottom. But this one, you only really have to give it a gentle nudge, you know, roll down the hill, letting gravity do the rest. For later missions, you really have to actually push it or pull it. Wrap yourself around it and carry it with you, basically. It turns out carrying a ball is pretty difficult if you don't have arms or legs. Now, this is an example of the first one of these obstacles that you really have to um, be extra careful with because in order to progress you need to get up there. But as you saw below, there's a bottomless pit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to this here checkpoint. over there. More optional stuff. There's a gold coin at the bottom of that. Got myself around this thing. And there's a keystone right there. So thankfully, the first example of one of those is not really difficult, it's just scary. Looking. That's the first time the game is really forcing you to go over the bottomless pit. And hitherto now, you really haven't had to do that except in order to progress. It's just optional side stuff, like those coins. there is the last keystone. But, as you can see up here, we have another switch. You can also see how these levels are getting longer and more elaborate. getting more comfortable with the controls and the gripping and the coiling and the slithering.
occasionally using this little bird to help. See? I gotta wrap myself the other way in order to push this the right direction. up a path that leads underneath that bridge. Where we have to go under there while we hit this checkpoint again. Another door. Sometimes the camera gets a little stuck there. So I unstick it. There's another bottomless pit area you have to go over. Although you can definitely ch still cheese your way past some of these early parts. That's the last of the three keystones, I believe. Yes, it is. Make our way to the exit. My playthrough of this game at some point I definitely um, was less interested in getting the collectible items and I wasn't just beating the level as I found that um, they were just beyond my capabilities. Alright, I'm gonna back out of here and I'm gonna select the uh, my left game which has all the levels unlocked. Four levels in the first world, and one, two, three, four in the second. Now we got this sort of fiery type level, fiery type world. And I'll show you a little bit of the first level of that. I do believe this is the first level in which you face things other than just bottomless pits that can kill you and send you back to the nearest respawn point. Here's the thing you have to operate. Open up a bridge. I'm just doing the left trigger, right trigger thing. Ripping myself around there. It's a different left trigger, right trigger thing than what you're used to. See, those are spikes. Land on them, go back to the respawn point. That's slightly different from the lava pits where you can actually touch it a few times before that happens. Be 
these style switches are a bit harder than I remember. the first of the keystones right there. But you have to crawl through this, get your way through this part first. a bit more difficult than I remember. Hmm. sort of wrap yourself around. Now this thing, you have to more or less keep turning until you get this, um, these set of pipes in a position where you can reach them. Like that. You have to, and they make it so you have to turn it a certain amount of times before it actually turns, because as you can see, just unwrapping myself around unwrapping myself from that thing caused it to turn. Makes it, it at first it seems a little tedious of how much twisting of that thing you have to do in order to get it to function, but it actually makes sense. Uh, my little birdie buddy to help me. Checkpoint. remember if there's anything actually over here. But you do have this thing. checkpoint. Now we have to navigate our way across that gap. There's the lava pits or the fire. Yeah, I'd say that's some sort of lava there. when you die. Thankfully, there was a checkpoint right here, so not much lost progress, and I didn't even have a keystone yet. 
impatience is generally not a virtue in this game. You want to be patient, you want to be deliberate, and you want to basically know what you're doing before you start doing it. Although sometimes impatience can be helpful. Oops, almost went right off a cliff there. Checkpoint. Another crank. There's a lot of cranks and things you have to manipulate in order to progress. And they get more and more as the game goes on. that could have gone wrong, but it actually went right that time. If I can figure out how to get up there. get across that gap. Not as difficult as it looks, but still can be a little dicey looking. As you can see, that is just one long pole you have to smother your way across, wrapping yourself in the ground. This is probably the one of the most difficult one. This is probably one of the easiest things to screw up, especially if you're the impatient type. But it can also be very easy. You just do something like that, I guess. As you can see, we got some spikes blocking our easy access to that area. I'm not entirely sure where we are supposed to go next. But regardless, I think I'm actually going to exit this level and show you a little bit more of the game. This is the last world, and this is the last level. I'll just show you a little bit of that. I did manage to beat all these levels. I came nowhere close to collecting all the stuff, but I did manage to make it through them, and this level, as you can imagine, was very difficult for me. So 
sort of a sky theme. With various different gameplay mechanics to go along with it, including wind. You have to now contend yourself with. And that wind will push you off. That wind will push you off whatever platform you're on if you're not careful. Alright, so look at that path you have to zigzag your way across. Like the way it is right now, it's pretty much impossible. But, find the switch over here. And these things pop up. And now it makes the seemingly impossible seemingly possible. It is blowing me to the left, the wind is. I'm wrapping myself around each one of these things individually before proceeding to the next one. It's a slow, methodical approach, but it works. You generally don't want to lift your head if you can avoid it in this level. It's very easy for me to just hold both the right trigger and the A button. That's not a good way of uh, playing this game. Especially as these later levels definitely prove. There we go. Now you have some other areas, you have some other spots where the wind actually helps you. In this case, if I hit Y, like this, the bird will actually carry me using the wind from one platform to another. Here's a checkpoint. Now you got some rotating platforms like this. But on top of that, you have the wind to contend with. As you can see, this does not make the snake happy. Anyway, um... You basically want to quickly wrap yourself around one of these coils and then try strong enough so that the wind doesn't push you off and then prepare yourself to transfer to the next rotating platform until you get to the next stationary platform when you hope that there's a checkpoint there. Checkpoints in this game can be generous at times, they can be stingy at other times, so you sort of have to be prepared for anything. This is not very secure at all. But, I can always just fall to my death. That's always an option, right? Now you don't have anything to wrap yourself around in this platform, so you just sort of have to coil yourself up about that. And then extend your head up like this, and immediately start tapping the left trigger. There we go, that's a little bit better, don't you think? And go like this, and hope you connect, and... Yeah, the bird's, the bird's not going to save me. And this is only the really the second obstacle of this level. And as you can see, it is already more messed up than anything we have hitherto seen thus far. I used way too many five dollar words in that sentence. Whatever. And it keeps going. No checkpoint, but hey look. Now you have these platforms rotating like that. As you can see, there's another blue ball there, blue orb, but that's, that's that, there's a reason why I haven't collected that one. Because this level is messed up just getting through it normally. Wow. 
And that's not going to save me. And I'm back to here. See what I mean about the checkpointing? Well, I think that's going to do it for me for today. Uh, thank you for watching. I appreciate anyone who takes the time to uh, watch my streams and my uploads. I do a four, I do a retro Monday stream on Monday night, typically at about eight o'clock. A modern Wednesday stream on Wednesday night, typically at about eleven o'clock or whenever I get home from work. And I do a 4K and/or HDR upload on Friday. See, even the snake is bored of me talking. And um, the bird is also disapproving. And I also occasionally do multiplayer streams, typically on Tuesday night, Sunday night, or Tuesday night, Saturday night, sometimes Sunday night. And I think the next one I'm, of those I'm going to do is going to be some old Call of Duty game online multiplayer. I have a number of old Call of Duty games, and I'll, I think I'll feature them tomorrow night. In any case, thanks for watching, and until next time, take it easy.